Hey guys, so about two weeks ago I picked up the Raspberry Pi 400 and I've got the personal computer kit. So I published a few videos about it and without being too cheesy, many thanks to everyone who watched those videos, who commented, subscribed, liked, etc. I do appreciate it. But unfortunately, I have did nothing with this so far. Absolutely nothing. I've just not had the time. The computer has been sitting on my desk. This is it. This is the Pi 400. It's been just been sitting around this kind of area. But my hope was that I would use this to experiment with different variations of Linux, with different projects, to improve my coding, to just play around with different things. I've just not had time. But I want to do something today. I want to do the very first thing that I'm doing with this and it's to overclock the CPU in this computer. So the process is relatively simple. You just open up the config file, you modify one line, you add another line, save the file, reboot, that's it. That's it, it's very, very easy. But skip to that part of the video if you want, but before I do that, I just want to show you the articles that have really covered this process that walk you through the tutorial. And I just wanna give you an overview of what this is all about. So the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B that's kind of looks more like that. That is clocked at 1.5 gigahertz out of the box, but people overclock it and they use fans and you know different things to, to keep it cool. The Raspberry Pi 400 is actually clocked at 1.8 gigahertz out of the box. But some intelligent people, more intelligent than me, have already overclocked it to 2.2 gigahertz. So I wanna share with you a couple of tutorials and I'll link to all three of these articles uh, down below in the description area. This one uh, on Raspberry Pi Spy, this is probably the easiest one to follow as far as you know, just actually making modifications and showing you the exact process. So this is probably the one to follow. And um, there's some good uh, uh, commands here as well as far as frequency monitoring, temperature monitoring, etc. as well, showing you how to do it all. This is a really good tutorial. But I also want to link to two articles here, one from Elliot Williams on Hackaday and one from Jeff Geerling. And Jeff and Elliot really did experiment with this and they, they tried a lot of overclocking and they, you know, they tested the thermals and they made sure that everything was okay. And that is the biggest thing about doing overclocking. It's about checking the thermals. Now, I do not claim to be an expert on overclocking, but I have overclocked my PC. I've overclocked my, some of my laptops. In the past, I had a cryptocurrency mining setup, which had like 30 graphics cards and... I was always undervolting, overvolting, underclocking, overclocking. And the key thing with all of that is testing and making sure that the thermals are okay and making sure that nothing is going wrong because when things go wrong, things don't boot up or you get the blue screen of death and windows, etc. But check out all of these articles. They'll really walk you through the process. So the interesting thing about all of this is that uh, Elliot got slightly different speeds from a uh, diff slightly different result, sorry, from Jeff. And that, I mean, that's kind of to be expected because of the silicon lottery, you know, just some some CPUs seem to handle uh, higher frequencies than others. And if I scroll down here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, Jeff started off with two gigahertz. And then you can see here, he tried 2.2 gigahertz, at which speed the CPU refused to boot entirely. Backing down to 2.5 gigahertz, it ran just fine, so we left it for three hours and it settled in at a cozy 62.5 degrees. Now, Jeff's, Jeff's mileage on this seems to be a little bit different. He managed to go up to 2.2 gigahertz and he didn't have any problems with rebooting or anything like that. He did it a little bit differently, differently though. Um, you can see he's up to 2.147 there and then we're up to 2,200. And yeah. He ran the stress test for 30 minutes and this is the temperature graph. So the tutorial here says to go to two gigahertz. I'm probably gonna follow this one and try 2.15 first. But one thing I want, want to show you is this part here from Elliot's article. It says that given that all of the Pi 4 series use dynamic CPU speed and throttle down to 600 megahertz when idle to save power, there's absolutely no reason I can think of to not overclock it. It'll be faster when you need it but not use more power when you don't. And that, that's a good point. And you can see this in the, in the graph above where when you overclock to two gigahertz, you can see the thermals are going up here. The thermals, uh, the temperature went up a little bit quicker when he overclocked it to, to 2.15, but it didn't go any higher at the end than overclocking it to two. So 
If you can overclock this to 2.15, what it means is that, in theory, it means that you're going to get more performance from your Raspberry Pi, like 10, 20% or whatever, but the thermals are going to be a little bit higher, but not too much. Now, again, like I was saying, it's all about testing, it's all about experimenting, it's all about checking those thermals and making sure that everything is running okay, but you should be able to get your CPU up to about 2, 2.1, 2.15, maybe even 2.2. One thing I do want to talk about though is just to clarify something I uh, spoke about in my last video. So when I did the unboxing and teardown video, I, I mentioned that the Raspberry Pi Model B had uh, was clocked at 1.5 and this was clocked at 1.8 and I said that it was effectively the same chip but it was clocked at a higher speed of 1.8. Now the reason I'm saying this is that Someone left a comment, and this definitely goes into the category of nitpicking, but someone left a comment on the video and they said, it's not the same CPU, it's a new revision of the CPU, take a closer look at your Pi buddy, right? So the reason I'm pointing this out is because Jeff actually shows this, and you can see it as the same CPU, you know, Broadcom 2711ZPKFSBO. The difference is the Model B has got BOT at the end, the Pi 400 has got COT at the end, which of course, is, you know, it's a different model number because it's clocked at a different speed, but yes, there's my clarification there. So without further ado, I have the Raspberry Pi loaded up here. And what I'm going to do is just follow the tutorial on Raspberry Pi Spy, which is this one. And the process is really simple here. You can see that you just have to load up the terminal and then it's sudo nano boot config.txt. So if I jump over to the sexy mouse, I'm going to load that up here. So we've got the terminal and I'm going to just follow that. And sudo, if I can type, sudo nano, I must admit this keyboard is not as good as I first thought. I think it's maybe the distance I've got this at. Um, so there we go. That's how easy it is. Right, so now that I've loaded it up, I just need to find the line about the frequency and it'll be commented out originally. There you go, that's it there. So I'll jump back just to, to the tutorial for a second. Um, and it says find the arm frequency line and change it to arm frequency 2000. And also above it put over underscore voltage equals six. Now again, you'll see that Jeff and a few others have experimented with different codes here, you know, tried different things. You might want to start with this one first and, and then see how you got on. But this is all we have to do here. So what I'm going to do is add over voltage equals six. When I go down to this, you need, you need to comment out the hashtag. And what I'm going to do I'll put 215. So I'm going to try 2150 and see how it got on. So we'll save, which if I remember right is Control X. Yes. Um, Control X saves it. Yes. And that's it. That's 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 the whole process. So all I have to do now is reboot the computer. And that's it. That's that's the whole process of overclocking your CPU in the Raspberry Pi 400. Now, I do want to, you know, kind of go back and forth with this and I want to test temperatures and mess around with it, but I encourage you all to do that yourself and uh, to see how you got on. But that's really the whole process uh, as far as overclocking the CPU in the Raspberry Pi 400. And like Elliot was saying, the whole point of this is that you'll maybe be a little bit warmer, you know, when uh, you push the, the the, the clock speed a little bit higher, but you're going to get higher performance. And the Raspberry Pi 400, if you remember, and I did do a, a breakdown of this, this has got this massive heat sink underneath this keyboard. So you can certainly get more from this computer than the 1.8 gigahertz, which is in the box, out of the box, sorry. Um, if I jump back here, you can see I'm now, uh, I'm, I'm now loaded up and yeah, doesn't seem to be any problems. Again, at this point, I've not experimented with it. This is something I need to test more, but I can't actually see that because it's changed because it rebooted. I couldn't see it on my screen there. Um, but yes, I, um, 
everything seems to be okay. Now, I, I can go in and check the task manager, etc. but I really should go in and start monitoring temperatures. That's something I'll maybe do in, a, in another video, but certainly so far, nothing seems to be out of place here. I, I do need to test it more, but at this point, I just want to say thanks for watching. I will leave a link to all of these articles. They do explain things in more detail. What I would say to anyone is if you've got a Raspberry Pi 400, give this a try. It doesn't look like this is going to overheat your Raspberry Pi 400 uh, that much more. Temperatures aren't going to be an issue and you're going to get a little bit more perform performance from the computer. Now, in certain tasks, like if you're just using Raspberry Pi OS and you're just using it to browse the web, etc., you probably won't notice a huge difference. But if you've got a large memory card there and you want to start using it to play games, etc., then 10, 20% extra performance could be the difference between a game not running well and a, a game running like it originally was in the 90s or 2000s, etc. So many thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Shout out to all those intelligent people who, who wrote those tutorials. But yeah, if you've got a Raspberry Pi 400, give it a try. Two lines of code, save the file, reboot. That's all there is to it. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching and take care.